Hello. I'm back from holiday. I am in the new church, so a lot of things that is new in my life. Unfortunately, something that hasn't really changed is what we see in the media. The attacks, terrorism, um, especially in Barcelona, uh, very a few days ago, white supremacist manifestation, neo-Nazi, anti-immigration, Islamophobia, and all this discourse that surrounds us. And at those moments, when we see this on TV, there's a part of us that wonder, what can we do? What can we really do about this? Of course, we can pray, we can write letters, we can petition our elected official or government, develop partnership with a lot of people, but still, this is happening. This is happening on a fairly regular basis, sadly. And and we know this is a complex issue, there's global issues that it's very difficult. There's many forces and many people and, and groups involved. And we wonder, wonder how can we faithfully answer or call to seek justice and resist evil, as the New United Church New Creed says. How can we um, do something in face of all this violence? And when we think about this and look at this week's lectionary, it's the reading from the book of Exodus, the beginning of the book of Exodus, what is famously called the, the birth of Moses. And through this narrative, we encounter something very similar than what we witness today. We have a mighty, powerful ruler, Pharaoh, who start to believe that there's too many foreigners on the land, too many of those Hebrew, we need to control them or they will overtake us. There will be a threat to his safety, his power, something that somehow we hear today. Too many strangers. So what Pharaoh does? He reduces the, the Hebrew to slavery and it's not really working for Pharaoh. So then move to ethnic cleansing, genocide, and and it must have been very challenging for the Hebrew because Pharaoh was almighty, he had all the power, did not have to lessen, did not have to consider the views or the sensibility of others. And what happened in this text? We witness a few acts of resistance. We have the midwives that refuse to obey uh, maybe what we will call today a legal order, but that is totally unethical to kill newborn uh, male child. We have a mother who refused to see her son dying for nothing. We have Pharaoh's daughter who most likely knew that this baby was not an Egyptian that the baby boy was Israelite, it was an Hebrew, and still went against the rule, against the, our father, and adopted the baby. We have a little girl who spoke up in a society where she was definitely not valued, and, and she was not asked her opinion, and still went and offered a solution. When we look at those little acts of resistance all by themselves, we know that just one action will not change an oppressive regime. But all put together, they're part of a chain of event that would change everything for the people of God. Because this little boy grew up to become Moses. Moses who eventually would free his people and be a great lawmaker and great founding figure for his people. There's this expression, this um, it's called the butterfly effect. That one action, I don't know if you heard about it, one action might not have a great impact, but the, uh, have a repercussion 
consequences, repercussion that, rip, that ripple all over, that could lead to a big change. And that's how it get back to us. The story remind us that we never know the impact our action will have. Because we're just doing this, the person might be grateful or not, but we don't know what will happen six or seven weeks later, how uh, will it change a life that will change another life that will change another life that we don't know. So we should not base our action or base the evaluation of our action are just the immediate effect of our actions. Furthermore, we're reminded that revolution often does not begin in violence, not always begin with guns. Violence is not always the best answer or the only answer for violence. Here we have act of kindness, love, acceptance, and somehow they became more powerful than all the violence in this story. And that's what we're called to think, I guess, in those times, in those difficult times, when we're confronted to those very horrible situations. Does not mean that we have to accept this, far from it. But the answer is not violence for violence. It's not they tell one of us we're gonna bomb this country or, or registration, bans. It's often starting to kindness, love, acceptance, and trying to go beyond the immediate result. Sometimes those things change not soon enough. I totally agreement with us, but we still have to act. We still have to create this chain of event that will permanently transform our world and create a better world. And that's what I hope for you today and that for this week, this coming month, that you will be able to notice that. And that's all for today. I remain Stéphane Vermeer, the lectionary man. And until next time, take care of yourself and see you soon.